This is Detective Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a drama film called Girl with a Pearl Earring. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Greet is the meek daughter of a Dutch tile painter who has recently gone blind, rendering him unable to provide for his family. This forces the family to send Greet to Delft, Holland, where she will work as a maid for the famed painter, Johannes Vermeer. Come 1665, she arrives in the bustling city of Delft, a far cry from her once peaceful existence in the lowlands. She loses her way momentarily, but soon shows up at the house, where she's greeted by a pair of ill-mannered girls. They direct her to Tanik, the Vermeer's other maid. She gives her a guided tour of the house, listing out Greet's duties while exploring the charming manor. Greet is then given a room, which is more of a cellar that's masked as one. Despite the drab living conditions, she happily makes it her own by displaying one of her father's tile paintings. While in vain, it's a hopeful attempt at making the place more homely. The following morning, Greet is hard at work during the laundry when she is approached by Katharina the ethereal wife of Johannes Vermeer. Greet attempts to ingratiate herself with Katharina, but she is quick to show her harsh nature by reminding Greet that she's still under the trial period and that nothing is settled in regards to her employment. Nevertheless, Katharina orders Greet to clean Vermeer's studio, a room she can never bring herself to enter. Greet begins cleaning the room diligently, careful not to disturb anything per Katharina's instructions. She stops, however, once she takes notice of the unfinished painting sitting on the easel. The rich tones and expressive colors enrapture the young woman, so much so that she fails to notice presence of another person entering the room. A stern-looking woman named Maria makes her presence known, startling greet. She asks the maid if she thinks that the painting is finished, but Maria goes on ahead to answer her own question, stating that it will take Vermeer another three months to even come close to completing it. She soon dismisses Greet, who more than happily complies. While out on a shopping run with Tanek, Greet catches the eye of the local butcher's son, Peter. Despite his gaze following her every move, Greet plays little mind to him and remains ignorant of his longing stare. They soon make their way back home, where they witness their neighbor's possessions being confiscated by debtors. Tanik informs Greet that Katharina is wary of financial troubles, so this would be enough to affect her already unstable mood. While having a somber dinner, the household overhears Katharina and Vermeer arguing over the family's financial situation, proving Tanik's words to be true. She later tells Greet that they once needed to sell Katharina's jewelry to stay afloat. In retaliation, she ruined one of Vermeer's paintings. It was an act that was so extreme that the lady of the house hasn't stepped foot inside the studio to this day. Greet's humdrum existence in the manor is soon shaken by the birth of Vermeer's sixth child. Katharina suffered a long and painful delivery, but all are joyous upon the arrival of a healthy baby boy. On the day of the christening, Greet is ordered by Maria to hand deliver a letter to Vermeer's wealthy patron, Peter von Riven. Van Riven is quick to open the letter upon receiving it, and he finds that it's an invitation to celebrate both the birth of Vermeer's child and the completion of the painting that Van Riven commissioned. He is indifferent to the invitation, and instead he turns his attention to Greet, who is less than eager to be the focus of his yearning gaze. He goes on to tell her that Vermeer is among the finest painters in Delft, before proudly showcasing one of his past works wherein he and an unnamed lady are the subjects. Van Riven delights in the fine artistry displayed in the portrait, and he relishes in the details of the fine lady on full display with her glittering jewels and silk clothes. He asks Greet if she can imagine herself in such finery, before making his desire terribly evident through his suggestive description of the lady in the painting and how much she loved being somebody for once how she loved being watched by the gentleman. This only causes great massive discomfort. Tanek later explains that the lady in the portrait was a maid. She's certain that the dress didn't stay on for long, and that the maid was carrying Van Riven's child before the painting even dried. Putting gossip aside, she and Greet make preparations for the upcoming feast. Only the finest china is to be used while an assortment of dishes is painstakingly prepared by Tanek, who looks like she wants to prove a point with her cooking. Peter makes a surprise appearance by delivering the meat himself, with his affectionate gaze focused solely on Greet, though she's disinterested at best with his fondness. On the night of the celebration, all are in good spirits as Vermeer's latest work is proudly displayed by his mother-in-law, Maria. Van Riven is very much pleased with the outcome, and he showers Vermeer with praises all at the expense of his wife, the very subject of the painting. When the festivities are done, monotony takes its familiar place within the house once more. 
and on one rainy morning, Vermeer catches Gray diligently cleaning his studio's windows. Struck by artistic inspiration, he asks her to hold her position for a moment before hurriedly scribbling her form on his canvas, giving Greet the chance to scamper off. Dismissing her thoughts about Vermeer's odd behavior, Greet joins her family for church, where Peter makes yet another surprise appearance. After service is concluded, Peter introduces himself to Greet's parents. Despite Great's apparent lack of enthusiasm, her mother stands in stark contrast to her attitude, and she looks more than pleased with her daughter's prospects. Peter walks Great home, where the two share a pleasant, albeit one-sided, conversation, and Great remains resistant to Peter's charms. Great is back to scrubbing the floors when she is stopped by Maria, who informs her that Vermeer is working on a new painting, despite having no buyer. Letting her curiosity get the best of her, she lurks about the studio under the pretense of being there to clean it. There, she encounters a wooden contraption that she's never seen before. Vermeer catches her in his studio, and instead of being mad, he indulges in her curiosity. He shows her how it works and explains the device's uses and specifics, and Greed enthusiastically listens. With her newfound knowledge, Greed later plays around with the reflection of light bouncing off the silver bowl she's holding. The children are delighted with the trick, but their loud laughter incurs an angry response from Vermeer. Cornelia blames Greed for her father's anger, so she retaliates by dirtying the line and sheets that Greed's just painstakingly washed. This earns a slap from an enraged Greed. After a hard day of work, Greed returns to her room. She thought that her little altercation with the children's done at that point, but to her horror, she finds her belongings strewn about the room. Worst of all, the tile that her father gave her has also been shattered. It doesn't take much thinking for her to know who did it. Greet begins to regularly visit Vermeer in his studio. When he realizes that Greet has an eye for the aesthetics of painting, Vermeer begins to mentor her on his process. Soon enough, a certain tenderness begins to grow between them. On one occasion, Greet asks why the colors in the painting look so flat. Sensing a teaching opportunity, Vermeer takes her by the window and asks her what the colors of the clouds are. At first, Greet answers that they're white, but she quickly takes it back, stating that the clouds aren't just white, they're yellows, blues, and reds. Vermeer is pleased with her realization and soon brings her to the attic which houses all of his unmixed paintings. He excitedly shows her how paint is made and urges her to grind some charcoal. Greet's always been eager to learn, so she happily obliges his request. As she struggles with the muller's weight, Vermeer guides her hand, and his finger interlocks with hers. Their sudden physical contact shocks Greet, causing her to withdraw her hand. They both choose to ignore the escalating tension between them and proceed as normal. With his trust in her growing by the day, Vermeer asks Greet to begin mixing paint for him. She tries telling him she won't have the time, to which he tells her to make time. Greet begrudgingly agrees and decides the best time would be at night, when the whole household is asleep. Despite some minor struggles at first, the task soon comfortably settles in Greet's daily schedule. After Tanik airs out her frustrations about the baby keeping her up at night, the household agrees to move Tanik to the cellar and Greet to the attic. It's an outcome that pleases everyone but Katharina, whose antagonism towards Greet is slowly growing over time, fanned by her jealousy of the time Vermeer spends with their maids. Even so, Greet is content with her peaceful existence. But her tranquil life and growing emotional attachment towards Vermeer are quickly shattered by Tanik. She informs her that Katharina is with child again, shocking Greet. In an effort to move past her feelings for Vermeer, she finally reciprocates Peter's affections. But despite this, Greet can't deny the tender emotions she feels for Vermeer, and it appears that Vermeer shares the same sentiment. Even the slightest touch is enough to spark a flame between them and the world is quick to catch on. On one quiet afternoon, Maria and Katharina barge into the studio, accusing Greed of having stolen one of Katharina's combs. With her fate seemingly sealed, Greed turns to Vermeer for help, and he fully believes her innocence. He goes on a rampage through the house, toppling items over and ravaging their pristine home. His family attempts to stop him from his crusade, but with persistence, he finds the missing comb hidden among Cornelius' belongings. After the girl is rightfully punished for her shenanigans, the household holds a meeting. Despite her proven innocence, Katharina is still adamant about Great's dismissal, but the pragmatic Maria decides against it, saying that they'll need the extra help with a new baby on the way. At Maria's instructions, Van Riven's invited to a luncheon in their home, hoping to secure another commission from the wealthy patron. She successfully persuades them into funding another painting and suggests it to be a family portrait. 
Van Ryven disagrees, and upon noticing Greet, he roughly embraces her and suggests for the portrait to be of him and her. An idea that Vermeer isn't comfortable with. Word of the upcoming portrait soon spreads, and the city of Delft gossips about the portrait's nature. Greet denies the rumors. Even when confronted by Peter, he insinuates that the hearsay is all true, and Greet's very offended by this. Peter warns her not to get too caught up in his world, so Greet asserts that she won't be letting Riven sway her. However, Peter responds that he wasn't referring to him, causing Greet to leave him in a rush, offended again by Peter's bluntness. On her way back, she runs into Van Riven and Vermeer. Van Riven manages to force him to make the portrait he wants, and he does this by insinuating that Vermeer and Greet have an intimate relationship, his tone threatening to spread the rumor. Nevertheless, Vermeer convinces him to just have Greet painted alone, much to her relief. Maria is quick to warn Greet that Van Riven is no fool and that they're all just flies in his web. She urges her to tread carefully and to keep the nature of the portrait from Katharina, out of fear for how her unstable daughter may react upon finding out. The following morning, Vermeer struggles to paint Greet. He asks her to remove her cap, a request that she is quick to refuse. Vermeer insists, saying that he needs to see her face better. She eventually relents when he suggests that she swap it out for a turban instead. Greet takes her cap off in the other room. When unbeknownst to her, Vermeer decides to watch her. She catches him soon after, but instead of acting shocked, she lets him truly see her for the first time. They stare into each other's eyes, a sense of longing lingering in the air as they steal a moment of intense intimacy despite the lack of physical contact. As for Katharina, she's becoming increasingly disdainful of Greet, even more so than before. This is largely due to Van Riven insinuating that Vermeer and Greet are having an affair. Katharina makes no effort to hide her jealousy, but her antics are largely ignored by both her husband and her mother. Vermeer continues to paint Greet and gets the idea to include the fabled pearl earring in her portrait. Again, Greet refuses to do this because her ears aren't pierced and because the earrings are Katharina's. In an effort to sway her opinion, Vermeer shows the unfinished portrait to Greet, but she's still worried about Katharina's wrath if she ever finds out. Van Riven comes over to look at the current status of his commissioned portrait, but upon seeing a defenseless Greet quietly hanging up the sheets, he quickly pounces on her. He pushes Greet to the corner all while attempting to force himself on her. She tries to fight back, but he threatens to have her fired. All looked lost for Greet, but with Katharina's sudden appearance, Van Riven is forced to leave her alone. The encounter leaves her heavily bruised, but she still refuses to have her ears pierced. This forces Maria to take things into her own hands, and she slightly reminds Greet of Van Riven's disgusting nature and how the family's survival depends on his commissions. With Katharina's absence in the following day, Maria hands Greet the pearl earrings and tells her to have the portrait finished the same day. She agrees and lets Vermeer pierce her ears. Greet tries to put on a brave face and push through the pain, but her tears betray her. To ease her pain, Vermeer comforts her by caressing her face, restraint evident in his stiff movements. He finishes the portrait that same afternoon. With her obligation done, Greet rushes out to the streets in search for Peter, using the poor boy yet again to forget about her affection for Vermeer. Upon finding him, she takes him by the hand and leads him to a secluded area of the city where the two of them make love. Afterwards, Peter proposes to Greet. He promises her a good life, a life away from servitude and hassle. But even with these promises, Greet doesn't give him an answer. Instead, she gives him one last kiss before running off. It doesn't take long for Katharina to catch wind of the portrait, bursting through the studio doors in tears. Katharina demands to see it. Upon seeing the work of art, she describes it as obscene, and she immediately questions Vermeer why he never paints her. And to this, he cruelly answers that she doesn't understand. Distraught, she attempts to ruin the painting but Vermeer stops her, causing Katharina to focus her anchor on Greet. She demands that Greet leave her home, and Greet does so with her head held high. She walks through the house one last time, and stops by Vermeer's door. She wishes to bid him goodbye, but since she can't, Greet rushes to leave the manor. Greet is now living with her parents again, and soon, Tanik visits her to deliver a package. It contains the blue turban that she wore along with Katharina's pearl earrings. The completed portrait now hangs in Van Riven's gallery. The man stares at it intensely as he beams with pride at the subject of the beautiful, classic portrait, a girl with a pearl earring. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.